Sadhu Sundar Singh mentioned him earlier. He was the man that picked up the words of that song and um, made it into a good Indian song with an Indian tune. Now he was from a Sikh background, born 1889, died 1929. At the age of 14, his, his mother died. They, they were a very high caste, a high class Sikh family. His mother died. He was angry with God, every God, especially the Christian God. He took a New Testament, got his school friends together and burnt in the playground the New Testament. I love it when people hate Jesus. They're so close to coming to him. One night, he got so desperate in his search that he said, I, I can't go on. It's terrible without my mother. I don't want to live. So unless God, the true God, really reveals himself to me tonight on the night train, when I, kn I know what time it's coming, I'm going to go down to the railway tracks, lay down on it, I'm going to end my life. The train was not far off. When finally, after agonizing the whole of the evening, Jesus came. Jesus stepped into his room. Jesus revealed himself to him. So this boy never went to the track, never died in that way, but decided the whole of his life would be lived for Jesus. Coming from that indigenous background, he was offended at many of the missionary churches that seemed to get preachers and pastors and even church members to dress in Western clothes, to sing Western songs. And he said, no, this is not right. I, I want to reach my people. So he refused ordination in the Anglican church to dress in the ordained robes of the Anglican church, which are actually based on Roman dress, but that's a whole other matter. And he took on the clothing of an Indian holy man called a sadhu. He was dressed in the sadhu robe, uh, saffron robe, but it was the yellow saffron, kept his Sikh turban, gave away all his possessions, and said, I'm not worthy to follow in the steps of my Lord, but like him, I want no home, no possessions. Like him, I will belong to the road, sharing the suffering of my people, eating with those who give me shelter and telling all men of the love of God. He was cruelly persecuted, often misunderstood, stoned, left to dead. The story of him uh, being thrown into a pit, which was the pit of execution for unwanted troublemakers in the village. And he was two days in the pit with putrefying, decomposing bodies. And then he heard the top of the well, the top of the pit, somebody turn a key and open the lid and he climbed out. There was only one key and the key was held on a chain around the waist of the chief. And the chief brought everybody in and says, who has stolen the key? to let, who is the traitor of his people? And he was highly embarrassed to discover the key still hanging on the chain. Probably an angel of the Lord had rescued the sadhu. He went everywhere by foot, known as the apostle of the bleeding feet. I am a great apostle of the Lord. Let's look at your feet. Do they bleed? He was everywhere telling people about Jesus. He went into remote areas. His passion was to get into the closed country of Tibet. He cl uh, climbed through the mountain passes of the Himalayas to present the gospel there. In fact, his last known journey was when he was still young, but prematurely old and sick, made his way on his own one final trek across the mountain pass and was never seen again. 
He renounced all possessions, carried with him no food, no money, just the threadbare clothes on his back, no protection against the freezing mountain weather, and a little pocket New Testament. He was many ways controversial because he kept the outward appearance of Hinduism in terms of his robe, but he did that to identify with his people. He had mystical experiences, so much so that the testimonies of his miracles, we don't know what was a vision and what actually happened. Not palatable to rational Western Christianity. But one thing we know about him, he was, in the testimony of, of many, the man most like Jesus they ever met. Even the children. Staying in a missionary home one evening, Sadhu was ascetic, rigorous in his self-denial, but a lover of life, very generous, happy, engaging. And after an evening with the family, it was time for children's bedtime. The kids said, please, mummy, can Jesus put us to bed? And this is what he said. His whole life shaped around the cross. One of his great and bitter disappointments was that he lived beyond the age of 33. That I can't even be like Jesus in his death. Why am I still alive? Didn't, die, didn't live very much longer after that. But he said this, when we have left this life, we shall not have a second chance of bearing the cross for Christ. 